is uh, what used to be called the distance education room. It's the uh, Flight 405 room. It really capitalizes on the small group, project, team-based, peer teaching kinds of, of teaching methods. It accommodates the instructor-led teaching as well. So a faculty member can use the space to explain things, to describe things. We're going to um, welcome any faculty members who want to use the space um, for their classes. Um, even if you teach a very large class, but you want to work with groups um, of 24, um, that space can be used for that. And so if you've got team projects or group projects, or you need students to do presentations, um, or you want to work them, have them work together on designing some multimedia, um, that space is really going to be excellent for that. The other thing that we really did intentionally with that room, because it is replacing the distance education room, was to try to create a room where we could be more consistent and more effective in enabling um, students who are learning at a distance. Uh, we've got some very robust um, uh, conferencing software and tools in that room, um, in addition to the, those that we're used to using, such as Adobe Connect. Um, but I think it's the video conferencing capabilities of that room that are going to make it easier for faculty and their students to work from different locations. Uh, one other way the Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning itself will be able to use the room um, is for training. We're really excited about having a space that we think is going to um, be a really workable, adaptable, um, comfortable space for faculty to be able to learn um, with each other and from each other. The other thing that we hear is that faculty want to be able to access um, short videos of, of workshops or trainings that we do or brown bag discussions that we might host. And that room, because it has um, two cameras that are really adaptable and are going to give us some really high quality video recording capabilities, I think now we're going to be better able to capture some of those sessions and be able to um, make those available um, for, for faculty who uh, couldn't attend or who, or who just want to see it again. And so we think it's a great space for meetings. Um, if you need a, a place where you can bring in a, a large group um, for a meeting and maybe even a meeting where you need to connect with a group at another location, um, that the technology in that room is going to uh, enable that. We also think it's a great space if you have a guest speaker who is at a distance but wants to do a presentation either for a meeting um, or even for a class. That we have the Learn Lab is, I think, um, really the result of a collaboration. I'd start with just uh, media production's willingness to uh, invite the Faculty Center to sort of reimagine what that room could be. And so that was sort of the, the initial invitation, and we're really grateful for that, that media production was willing to do that. Um, of course, we sit in flight, and um, so it was really easy then to engage um, the dean and the faculty and staff here in flight to be able to work out a, um, a process for us to imagine what the room would be. So we're really grateful for that collaboration. And, and last, you know, these things are not inexpensive. So we're, we're grateful for the support that the Faculty Center is able to have both from an endowment from um, the Timmy family as well as um, funding from Academic Affairs. The Provost's office provided uh, some support to help us build that room. All of that is to say it's an asset for the university. It came to be an asset because of a lot of collaboration.